In this episode, how I write and revise Paris Juju, maybe, maybe not, a reader's question, how can I be a more adventurous travel, journey blessings, and more. Thanks for watching. Juju, by the way, is a French word. It means toy or plaything. So I like that Juju has this root of play and fun in it. I wanted to share a revision process of an article, what I go through, how I write and revise. I just want to say, don't worry about reading any of this. That's not the point that you are able to read what I'm showing you, but just the overall process. So I usually start with some notes. This was a, an article about give, getting feedback, and I had written this before, but I kind of needed to reframe it. So I wrote some notes, reframing it, and then I took the original article and started tweaking it. I typed it up, and then I printed it up, and then I read over it, and while I was reading, I made more notes about changes to make. And as you'll see, there's a lot more writing on this page than you would think. And then there's a whole other section that I had to add. And then this page is just almost all written on. I write all those changes and then I go into the computer and I put those changes in and get to a third document. And then I print that up. And with this one, at this point, I'm sending this to a friend and the friend is also reading it and giving me feedback. And then I'm also going through and making notes about small word changes. You can see the process. It's pretty messy. And the point that I want to make with this is that the first draft is likely going to involve a lot of revisions. But for me, what really works is getting it out on paper, having something to work with, and then I can revise that way. I hope this helps your revision juju, makes it easier for you to write and revise more easily. Try these methods and see what works and let us know what works for you with your revision juju. Join me and other happy writers in my six week online course, Make Writing a Happy Habit. It starts Monday, May 3rd. You'll want to take this course if you're tired of struggling to write, if you're actually never getting to your writing. And if you really want to have writing as a regular part of your life, I can help. Join us for Make Writing a Happy Habit. It starts May 3rd. You can register online at originalimpulse.com. My friend and editor David Hicks insists that you have to read your entire novel aloud to someone else in order to get a real assessment of what needs to be revised and what can be improved upon. Of course, I've avoided this because it seems like it's a total cringer to me. I don't want to read my novel aloud. I don't want the faults to be pointed out to me or anybody else. But the writer in me wants to make this novel as good as it can be, so I have an idea. Remember in episode one when I talked about different possibilities for the novel, I said I could go to Paris and soak up some juju. It's just kind of frivolous and not really optional. Get on a plane and go to Paris in June where I sit at a computer and revise 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 do i really need to go to paris to do the revision then i thought wouldn't it be fun to go to paris and record the novel in the settings as much as i could record the scene on the plane in the plane that just sounds so much fun then the juju just started flowing my character lily is on her way to a literary festival at the contemporary shakespeare and company bookstore in paris and I went to Shakespeare and Company's Literary Festival in 2003. And that's where I met Noel Riley Fitch and my friend Heather Stimler Hall. I also happened to be in Paris in 2008 during the literary festival in June. And I met John Baxter, who invited me into his apartment, which was in the building where Sylvia Beach lived. So I was able to get into the building there. Guess what? If I go in June this year, the conference is happening again. It happens every other year now. So I could go and soak up some more Sylvia Juju. It would be such a fun way to do the recording of the novel, and I could read it as if I'm reading it to you. Well, I'm considering it, going to Paris and recording my entire book in situ. And um, why not? 
I can also make videos of what I'm seeing and experiencing to share with you as a way to bring you with me. So what do you think? Some Paris juju coming my way? Maybe they wear a little beret? This is what I really need, is some good housing juju. Even though I usually rent apartments when I go to Paris, and that is cheaper than staying in hotels, it still racks up. So what I need is a house-sitting gig or a really cheap apartment or somebody who knows somebody who can help me find a great place to stay while I'm in Paris. If you have ideas, drop them in a comment or send me an email. Help me bring my Paris juju in. Help me make these recordings happen. My Paris de juju! A new passport. It's so pretty. I love it. And I actually have a fairly good photo. It's not great, but I'm ready to go to Paris. And I have a question from a reader about travel. Gloria is adventurous in many ways, she says, but she'd like to be more adventurous with travel. Should she plan a trip on her own, go with a group? And her final question is, should I have more money before I commit? Here's my advice for you, Gloria, and anybody who wants to be more adventurous with travel. I say go it alone, but get clear on what you want from your trip. Is it to explore something new? Is it to learn something? Is it to go to a familiar place that you've loved or a place you've always wanted to go? You have to first ask yourself, what's your journey juju about? Write that down and get clear on that, and then plan a trip. Often you can plan a trip around an event. I planned a trip around a literary festival in Paris. That was a trip that I took alone in 2003. I also planned a long road trip from Denver to Miami, Florida. It took three weeks and I visited friends all along the way and I had the best time ever. I loved the freedom and the flexibility plus the connecting with people I knew and loved. I highly recommend traveling alone. I encourage you to read a book called A Journey of One's Own. It's by a woman named Thalia Zapatos. Her book completely encouraged me to go it alone and to not be afraid, and I highly encourage you to travel alone. You find a lot of freedom and flexibility, and you get to know yourself and really rely on yourself and develop confidence. So find something that you connect with, a place you connect with, have a reason and some structure and perhaps some people to connect with while you're there. And then in terms of the money, what I would do is get a clear sense of how much the trip is going to cost, write down an, an estimated budget, look for ways that you can cut those some of those costs, staying with people, using frequent flyer miles, rent an apartment instead of a hotel so you can cook some meals, breakfast, coffee, things that cost a lot to eat out, and then start saving. You know how much money you need, start saving, let the money come in through unexpected ways, maybe you'll get a gift, maybe a tax refund, this has actually worked a lot to bring in your journey juju. So Gloria and other women and men who want to travel alone, I highly recommend it. You don't need a group, you don't need a friend. Be more adventurous with your travels. Okay, let's invoke some journey juju. I've got a journey blessing here. This is for me for my trip to Paris and for you for wherever you're going. I'm going to draw a blessing for us and make our trip more magical. Let's see, we'll get a good one, get a good one. I've got it. Got it. You do not experience Montezuma's revenge. Lucky for us. Here's to your journey, Juju. Feel free to pick up your journey blessings at my website, originalimpulse.com. Blessings. <laughs>